Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Hope your turkey cooks delectably and your team plays magnificently. Thank you for letting us get you ready for some football. And happy <laughs> Thanksgiving and happy football to my guys, Michael Irvin and Richard Sherman. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving, Skip. Thank you, Richard. Same to you, Playmaker. Hey. Great morning, great morning. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I've had plenty of these great mornings where it's all about food, family, and so football. Sounds great. Football. All right. We will get to LeBron's great bad night last night here in LA in just a few minutes, but let us start with Playmaker mm. Michael Irvin. Do the commanders pose any threat at all to the Cowboys today at Jerry World? Oh, of course they pose a threat now. There have been plenty Thank of games you. and plenty of times, guys, that we go into this game because I played in it many times. Yeah. And you're playing against this Washington team. You have the better team, and they have won. Or we had the better team, and they have won. Or they had the better team, and we have won. So sometimes when you get in these games, that's I love the NFL have made these division games. A lot of those records go out the window because you know each other so well. So, Skip, this is a perfect opportunity for Dallas, a perfect opportunity to push forth their progress and where they're trying to go because they're going against a last-place team in, in, in a perfect opportunity because this team likes to put the ball in the air, Sam Howe, on the leaderboard and PRs thrown. But also, it's a perfect time because when they put it in the air, Dallas, Deron Bland in that secondary gets interceptions and the opportunity to get to the quarterback is very important. It's the last place team, but you got to show up and play because since it's, it's a division team, you got to throw those records out the window. Mm, agreed. No Go question. Rich. No question. Yeah. I, 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 I think they'll cruise to an easy win, but I, I do think Sam Howell is going to be productive. I think Deron Bland will get his hands on the football. I think the pass rush for the Dallas Cowboys will get hot. You know, they'll have four or five sacks. Uh, and they'll win the game. I think they'll get CeeDee Lamb more involved today. He didn't have the most <clears throat> product <clears throat> productive game last week, so I'm sure they'll make up for that this week. Mm. Right. Okay, my turn. I'm going to tell you why I believe this will be a close game and will probably take another mm. year off my life. As Michael just alluded <laughs> to, he, he has been involved in these Dallas-Washington games many times. I have covered them many, many, many more times than even Michael played in them. And trust me on this. Mm -hmm. There is something in the DNA of, of every Washington player. As soon as they're drafted, it's like their DNA changes. Right. And they right. are taught, they are brought up in that organization that in the end, all that really, really matters is right. beating Dallas. And in the end... Right. The, right. the, the blood is right. bad and worse for that team that we used to call another nickname all those times, Michael, in the past. But mm -hmm. we, we know what we used to call them. That's now the commanders. But mm. th their blood is so bad for Dallas, it's, it's worse for them. The rivalry is, is much deeper for them than for the Dallas <laughs> Cowboys. So it's always a right. little harder for Dallas to get up for Washington than it is for Washington to get up for Dallas. Now, what do I see right. for, for our right. Cowboys right now? Th this is the last game on the schedule, and all, all Michael and I have heard this whole football season is, oh, you just you beat up on the bad teams and you can't beat the good ones. Well, this is the last time, and this is obviously a home game, that we have a, so to speak, turkey. This is the last time we are clearly supposed to win the game because then it this is the calm before right. the storm of here comes Seattle here come the Eagles back in the rematch it'll be at Jerry World and then it's at Buffalo and it's obviously on to Miami and then we got Detroit at home that'll be a battle maybe for NFC sort of supremacy or top of the NFC and then we have to mm. go and face our arch rival these commanders at their place to end the season no idea if that will matter or not I hope it doesn't but the point is, Arizona did happen to these Dallas Cowboys. So do, do I completely trust them in the ultimate kind of trap game on a Thanksgiving where it looks like everything's yeah. set up for them to take off? 
no, I, I can't completely trust because they've given me no historical reason to trust them right. in a game like this. So what do I see from Washington? Well, I think people are overlooking because of the 12 and a half point spread. Sam Howell does lead the NFL in passing yards. And again, it's maybe it's a misleading stat because he, he also leads in attempts. He leads in completions, but they throw it all over the lot. I do have the highest regard for Eric Bieniemy as a strategist, as a play caller. He didn't get the credit he deserved, obviously, right. in Kansas City. But all of a sudden, he's got this offense in a very dangerous place where they can score on you quickly. The problem against the Giants, obviously, in the last Sunday was that they gave it away six sure. times. You, you can't throw three picks. And by the way, Sam Howell also leads the NFL in interceptions. And he also leads the NFL in time sacked because he's been sacked more than any quarterback. So there, there's high risk, high reward on Washington's part. So now what do I look at the body of work so far from the commanders? Well, I, I don't know if anybody has noticed this but me, but, but look at this. They're three and three on the road. They have played very well on the road where every game they played away from Washington They've been right in the thick of it. And remember, they, they also they played Philadelphia twice, and they took them to the wire twice. So why wouldn't they come in and have the capability of taking Dallas to the wire? But just if you run down their schedule, they won at Denver, 35 to 33. At Philadelphia, it went all the way to overtime, and they lost 34 to 31. And I thought they had every Ooh. chance Riverboat Ron turned into Tugboat Ron and didn't go for two when he had a chance to win the game outright. But then the, at right, Atlanta, right. they won 24-16. to 16. At, at the Giants, it was a close game. It went to the wire, and they lost 14-7. to 7. Even Philly at home, it was 38-31, to 31, and they did win at New England. I know that's not worth much, but when you say Washington's a terrible team, well, they, they did go to New England and win 20-17. to 17. They have the ability, the capability to play much better on the road. So, Michael, as you know, there are years during your dynasty, during the Staubach dynasty, when Dallas just owned this Thanksgiving stage. It was almost like unfair, right. where it was just your baby, your launching pad every year into uh, the ability to streak into the playoffs. But over the last 13 Thanksgiving games at Dallas, you're five and eight. Well, you're, you're starting to lose your grasp of that ho great home field advantage, the biggest stage in the sport this side of the Super Bowl. And even though we have won 12 straight games, we, we haven't been very good on Thanksgiving. We've lost three of the last four. So I'm, I'm adding this up to say I, I think Washington is extremely dangerous today. The perfect place at the per perfect time, the perfect trap game possibility for a visiting team. And that's exactly yeah, I, what I say also. But, I, but, but, but also, Skip, also, this is, and, and I love that you ran down the schedule, and the schedule gets tougher from here because you, you talk about Jimmy Johnson going in to, in, into the Ring of Honor on, on the 30th. I yep. thought that was perfect. And I don't know if he played it that way, but it played perfect. Let me tell you why I say that. Because today... Marks that last day when you say, okay, now you got a team with a losing record. After this, it's come, here comes that gauntlet. Now here comes that gauntlet. Jimmy Johnson would always say to us, would always say to us and make us focus in right here. After, the, after Thanksgiving, you have to declare who you are and you go down this stretch and you go into the playoff. It's very important, this stretch right here. For me. You yep. mentioned the bad record that Dallas have right now mm -hmm. on Thanksgiving. And, you know, even after Thanksgiving, going towards that playoff, I like that they have a tough schedule. That Jimmy used to put force on us and start pressing down to make yep. sure you stay focused. That record is bad because that's not the same situation in Dallas right now. But the record will make them focus. The record will tell them, you got to make sure you stay tuned in and turn, turned in or you will get turned away from a playoff opportunity. That's the part I like going down the stretch with Dallas' schedule. Everybody's saying it's getting tough. I think tough is good right here as you have to declare who you're going to be going into the playoffs. Absolutely. No question. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a very revealing stretch 
for them. You know, they got Seattle next week on Thursday. These 11 games, I mean, these <clears throat> three games in 11 days, it's going to be a tough stretch, but they'll survive that. They'll go into the Seattle game probably 8-3. and three. I think they'll, they'll – Skip believes they'll just walk through Philly uh, at home just because they're in Jerry's world. Like, Philly won't get better. I think Philly's going to give you a tough game as they always do, and they're going to walk out of there giving you your first home loss in, what, 13, 14 games? Uh, I think Seattle – actually, Seattle might give them your first home loss uh, the you, week before. You better hope then so. Then you're going to go – Yeah, we got a dinner on that then one. Then you're going to go back-to-back. <laughs> yeah. Back. yeah. We okay. got dinner on both. Okay. And, and then dinner on both. I, I, I think the, – yep. Then I think the game in Buffalo, they're finding their own. They fired Ken Maybe. Dorsey, Joe yep. Brady – you know, I, it, uh, Josh Allen saying he's back. You know, like Irv always say, Mortimer, I'm back. You know, he's he's back. He's playing well again. Um, I, I I think Miami and Tua Tagovailoa and Tyreek Hill are going to give you guys a tough game. I just I, that's that stretch. If they come through that stretch and have a winning record against those teams, they will make me a believer at least yeah, they, they uh, that, they, that they are a true contender. I don't I don't I don't know if they'll do that right. though, Skip. Yeah, and Richard, and they'll quick, convince I'm, themselves. I'm sorry, go ahead, Michael, go. I was saying, and they will also convince themselves that they are a, a true contender. It's not just making us out here see it. It's also knowing, knowing it's in your heart and that you see it. And that's the important part. This stretch is very important. That's why I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, R Richard, just quick point of order. I, I didn't say Dallas will walk through Philadelphia. I just said Dallas will win the game. Right. I don't want to give them any more bulletin board material than we already have <laughs> oh, given I tried them. To sneak but that just in. for the I record. I tried to sneak that in. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. <laughs> but, look, Richard, to your point, what would you say the score would be today? Like, pr pretty wide margin? What, yeah, I think, yeah. I, I, think, I think they're going to win by 14. Okay, 31, by 14. 17. All right. Okay, I, I would love to see them win by 28 or 30 today because it, this, this is a measuring stick for me, and you can laugh at me if you want, but I need to see a team that I really believe in, that Michael really, really believes in, come out and say, here, here we come, watch this. We are going to take care of business in the first quarter to the extent that Washington will say no mas because Washington is teetering right now on no moss because most people are predicting or at least speculating that may become their bye week, which is in a couple of more weeks, it's week 14, that Ron Rivera would lose his job, that maybe Eric Bieniemy would get a late, late season chance to audition a bit as the quote unquote interim head coach. So I, I, I don't know what the mentality of the Washington team is right now. I know they hate Dallas, but I'm wondering, and love to hear you guys chime on this one, is it possible in their psyche that they won't be all in today because they do love Eric Bieniemy and they would like to see him get a chance? I, I don't know their psyche. They were down on Eric Bieniemy no, back in, no, the, no. in the camp, remember? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Right, 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 right. Skip, you're right, and, and, and I think I thought through that too, but, but you talked about this earlier. When you come into Washington, just like when you come into Dallas, they still talk about this rivalry as, as that great rivalry. Yeah. Washington, I, I remember players saying when they got to Washington, they were like, we don't care if you lose every game, just beat the Dallas Cowboys. That was the mentality in Washington. That still is the mentality in Washington. Dallas is going to see some real, real competition. They got to step up to that. And as you say, they got to swat it down. They got to say, right now, you're not in our class, and we're showing everybody the yeah. class that we are in and swatch this in the first quarter. Yeah, okay. So Yeah, I, I, go, I think they will do that. I, I, I think... I don't know if they won't show up for Eric Bieniemy in that way, Skip, because not showing up for him, at least offensively, does the opposite for him. It makes yeah, him look bad. I, I so agree. I think they want real mixed emotions right. about this. I, I got because I would love to see Eric just get some chance to be a head coach, even if it's interim right. tag. So would I. Just, just to see right, see how it felt. It, it's it's a la Antonio Pierce in Las Vegas with the Raiders, but, but Antonio was getting right. a way better shot at it with, with probably a little mm -hmm. better football team overall, even though at quarterback you're back right. to a rookie quarterback. But, again, if, if Washington – let's do the worst-case scenario. If Washington rises up and, 
and upsets Dallas today, then Ron Rivera is kind of back in the saddle, right? I mean, I, I no, no, you, I don't. you don't think so? I, mean, I don't think I don't, I don't think there's much he can do to really get himself back in the saddle. I think they traded away their two best defensive players. Well, it looked like they just gave up. And Chase yeah. Young. Yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. And and and, right. uh, and Sweat. They. So I don't think they're. I don't think they're necessarily saying, "Hey, man, Ron Rivera, you win these couple and you're back in the saddle." I think he's gone either way. I think there are certain things that have been done in the past. They got new ownership. They I think do. they want a fresh start and maybe. Eric Bieniemy is that fresh start that they want, a young face, a, a, a great offensive coordinator who, who, who is players. It took them a second to buy in. As you said, Skip, they yeah, were complaining did. about him earlier. Yep. And right. I'm sure they're right. missing right. him in Kansas right. City because right. of the discipline and, right. and what he asks of his players and what he demands Correct. of his the players. Hard he wouldn't accept the, the hard coaching. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. That you were talking about. They, 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 they key, and I must give key credit, the key pulled this out very early. When everybody was saying mm -hmm. in Kansas City, oh, we'll fix it, we'll fix it. And then we were like, wait a minute, maybe this is a sign of yeah. missing Airbnb, that hard it coaching, is. that discipline style mm -hmm. that everything matters. Yeah. And now when you come over to Washington, and, and early on when we heard this, it, it's different, it's different. When, okay, he's out there coaching the offense hard, and, and all of a sudden that little spark up or dust up they had in the media. That tells you there's two voices now in that locker room. And, 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 and if they got a voice to go to that saying, we don't have to do it that way. I, I believe it, then they'll run to that voice, rather that's Ron Rivera or anybody. So I believe what you guys are saying, and we must point out that, man, maybe this thing is all Eric B. Enemy. You're seeing that offense. The thing that you brought up, though, Sherm, if I'm planning on keeping you, why would I be getting rid of defensive players? Because you are a right. defensive coach. That, 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 that is a shocking tale. Yeah, and by the way, would you believe Washington still is number one in the NFC in sacks, except it's, they're at 35, but 11 and a half of them belong to Chase Young and to Sweat, who obviously went to San Francisco and Chicago. So it, not, right. not half of them, but, but maybe a third of, yeah, about a third uh, of them belong to those two. Okay, so you, you can sort of discount that. But Michael... I want to remind you and everyone else, when you played for the Dallas Cowboys, you went six and one on Thanksgiving Day games. And you yeah. remember what the one was? Yeah. We don't want to see anything like this happen. Obviously, it's not going to snow today in Dallas. But if we could see oh, yeah. what oh, happened yeah. right. to Michael Irvin's team <laughs> the in Leon the snow. Game. Yeah, it's the Leon oh, no. Lett special. Michael remembers this. Block the field goal to win the game. The game's going to be over. It's going to be over. It's going to be over. Jerry's celebrating. And w w wait a second. Leon Lett decides to touch or kick the football. Oh, my God. It's a live football. And guess who recovers? The visiting team recovers. And they get a second shot, a shorter shot at that field goal, a chip uh -huh. shot. And they make it. And it's Miami 16, Dallas 14. What do you remember about that, Michael? Oh, my <laughs> God. It's so funny, too. And you, you guys, when, when, right before we went on the air, and I'll explain to everybody, I called Leon. Oh. And I had Leon on the phone, and I was saying to him, big fella, you know we're talking about you again today. Because right after this play, right, right after this play, right after this play, Leon, we went in, and, and Skip, you remember Jimmy would cut people Oh. Right if they made a mistake in the Woody. game, he'll cut you right away. Kirby Richards, yeah. So, mm -hmm. when, right, right. When we came in after the game, Jimmy grabbed Leon right away. He said, you're good. You're fine. I <laughs> okay. went ran in, I ran in, went to coach. He said, I'm not going to cut him. I told him. I caught Leon. He was in the bathroom, bent over by the stall, crying like a baby. <laughs> Boo-hoo crying. <laughs> and I felt right. so bad. I said to him, big fella, I know how bad you feel right now, but Coach mm -hmm. said you're going to be fine. <laughs> and I said, big fella, know this. You're going to be the most famous dude on Thanksgiving. Yeah. From here Forever and ever. Forever. Yep. Yeah. Forever. And, 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 and I was just I, laughing with him about that because every year we bring that up, man. That's funny. Yeah, That's it a is. funny world. Well, and, I just wonder what he was thinking because, like, I, I mean, it was blocked. Maybe he thought it was live for some reason. Know. He had to recover it, but I don't, I don't know. know. Just let it be. Everybody was saying, let yeah. it go, Leon, let yeah. it go, let, it, let go. it go. And he came right in and got it. And, Michael, final thought, 
One reason Jimmy didn't cut Leon is because Leon was really, really good, and his potential right. was exploding at that point. All right. 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 Uh, and next, we went, on. We yeah. went on to win the Super Bowl after yeah, you that. Should, yes, you did. Good point. All right. Up next, we got to talk a little bit of NBA because LeBron James was so great last night, then so bad last night. That's next. Yeah. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.